Jaa, että Council of Stellar Managementin meeting on päällä, pitää 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 heti mukaan. Ehtiiköhän vielä? 14 minuuttia sitten ehti. Näytänkö mä siltä, että mä oon kauheasti huolissani tosta? Kyllä mä kuulen sen, että se vittu ole mulle siitä, että onko toi mukaan joku oikea hallintaelin, että aina toi luuse, että sanoo toi läsi. Kyllä mä kuulen sen sillä, mitä mä oon tarvittu kuunnella. Computer, don't fail me now.
time I would have thought was would be unreal, but that was never going to be a very good idea. Yes, so trust them to trust the violations. No bad outcome could possibly arise from this. No, uh, nothing whatsoever. A total vigilante system of laws. Nothing bad would happen, right? It's not like people would start making meta games and then meta killing each other and then, yeah. It's just nothing bad will ever happen. There's nothing bad that will happen unless we have a major military to support us in our lives. And you don't get paid. That'd be inconceivable. Absolutely inconceivable. How can you say people will use games to kill real people? How can you say that? <laughs> yeah. If you have the time, you could probably do it like... We're not debating what to do about all these, you know. And we just have to wonder, we have to have a world. So, uh, if anyone is planning on running for CSM, those people have to understand that it's going to be time coming to and stop them and just, you know, I'm on, I'm super important person. We have a lot of people accused of taking it as a whole sack. They're the whole sack, like half of them, approximately five, six. And of course, we're from different alliances, and we're in the game, we're usually hostile to each other. But uh, generally, we all think that all sack is a thing. That's where we all agree on. And often it's easy. When, when it's general things that would improve all alliances, sometimes it can it can get a little bit of a fight. It's uh, very popular right now with, with the big war that's happening right now. And there's some like drones at the, the areas in use and all that. And that's where the opinions often go a bit different. And yeah. So it's up it's most often it's repeated to the the same thing, but sometimes we clash on the back each other. It's impressive how uh, how CCP is and how willing they are to get our opinion. I mean, I, I've been following it. I've known that the CSM has made great headway this season before, so they've done a lot of great work. And um, it was really great to get in there and actually see that this is it's not just PR. It is real. They are really listening to us. They are really taking our opinion, and they really want. They really care more to be the player than So that was my instant first reaction after a couple of weeks. It was really nice and it's been like that for I mean there's always gonna be times when when CCP is ultimately going to go with their best judgment. Uh, which is perfectly up to them it's perfectly fine even if it annoys some people, but I, I wouldn't call it a nice little incident at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of these people feel that CCP doesn't listen to people to uh, either have Excessively radical, perhaps, yeah. or, or you know, they're just feeling like they want to accept the future for whatever. They want my way, damn it. Yeah. A lot of these people are just. I don't like the fact that you guys made a system where you can actually earn money, and my little browser game is getting asked. I don't like that. That's what these complaints are. Yeah, that's what they are. Ignore it like 90% of the orders. I don't like the fact that your browser game allows you to actually make money. Well, it changed, put it in terms, changed from that application to develop, and even though people have gone down to things, this influence definitely still rests on in terms of how the game is developed. So it was very eye opening and educational. I think that the game will fill me all my days to put together. And I, I, I just want to see you debating some things and then know from me as the representative would like in some fashion or somebody else who is in charge of the development group. Well, there are, um, I mean, there are certain teams, there are certain areas that are going to put on. And there are times where there are certain stuff like, hey, if this, if this happens, there'll probably be problems. It happens if they do it anyway, and the problems we said they do. And then that's how it burns, and they thought they would. So they're, they're bumps, they're um, definite. That would be the renovators next door it's telling me that yes, that's what we're talking about. It's a genius, it's important, it's a bad thing. See, our audio system's got a little fucked up. Of course, a lot better. The region has to take the season in the first place, but before they come.
The person who bailed like a banana. Well, yeah, didn't bail. <laughs> exactly. Hmm? That's how distributed democracies work. like half of these Six months is kind of too short, but nine months or so for a government period. So you don't, you know, lose your focus. Mm 
fun for the game is certainly extremely important. Uh, having a kind of vision in your head of what you would like to see the game become uh, is certainly important, although it's not something that you can use to drive kind of a, you know, a campaign within uh, CCP. CCP uh, has the game designers, and the CSM is not, they are not uh, game designers by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, we are first and foremost a, a focus group where CCP can bring us ideas. Um, you know, we are a good sounding board and we can provide, you know, brief ideas about things that CCP is, is considering doing. But at the same time, it is important to have kind of a vision of who you represent um, within uh, within the game. So we see CSM delegates who are null set delegates. We see CSM delegates who are, um, you know, uh, formal focused. We see, you know, people like myself who are more small game focused. So you should definitely have a, a sense of the type of game you would like to see. Uh, that is important in terms of the campaigning process, and it's important in terms of getting players engaged in the process. Because you don't get on the CSM without getting several thousand people who play this game to say, yes, you should, rep you, your vision of the game matches my vision of the game. I would like to see you out there representing. And so that's probably the most important thing. Um, but with the uh, new voting system, uh, we're also seeing uh, an increased importance in terms of making alliances uh, with other CSM candidates that share your vision. I mean, there were there were a lot of um, CSM 8 candidates that I went out and talked to and tried to get their sense of their vision of the game and the ones that were consistent with mine. I endorse them, they endorse me, and that way if I don't get in, you know, perhaps they do or vice versa. So both of those things I think are very important. Anybody who's like, thinking about running for CSM now? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Space Jam. Hello and welcome to the final day of the third weekend of the near field of the The final of today is to be Memex, is we got indeed. We've got more people joining us soon. Yeah. It's going to be so many good people uh, joining us today on SAT talking about uh, talking about spaceships and uh, other cool things. And uh, we have we have a lively crowd right here behind us. Uh, are we in a? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The crowd is already going nuts, as I'm sure uh, you at home are as well. Uh, here, uh, in front of your computers. Here. Oh, Yeah, <laughs> I'm 
I've got my fingers crossed, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I was in the election. I did run for re-election. I did. I'm feeling pretty good, mm -hmm. but there's always that chance that something's just gone horribly wrong. Tell me why this council was created. Why, why do we have this? So there's a couple of different origin stories, actually. It's kind of a funny little political thing. One option, or the, the story goes that there was this scandal where a developer was cheating. He was uh, spawning Tech 2 BPOs and giving them to his alliance mates. And that was awful and horrible. And CCP created an internal affairs department and also the Council of Stellar Management as kind of a check mm -hmm. on CCP and what CCP is doing and a filter to help the, the players have some way of keeping CCP accountable. It's mm -hmm. evolved since then. Uh, right now, if I'm trying to give a summary to someone who has no idea what I'm talking about, I'll say volunteer consulting. Uh, but we are a lobbying group for the players. Uh, the players will come to us and they'll say, this needs work, this is broken, this is really hurting the gameplay right now. Can you bring it to CCP's attention? Can you get it on their agenda? And we've done that successfully, and that's been mm -hmm. amazing. Um, we're a focus group. We signed an NDA with CCP and they give us early access to uh, features that are coming out, both sort of fully developed features where they're just kind of showing us it before it goes public and even way back in the design process. And that's incredibly valuable for mm -hmm. CCP and for the player base. Um, I've been telling people who to vote for you want to find someone who thinks like you because it means that in that room when CCP comes to us and they show us uh, a feature that they have, that person will be able to look at it and they'll be able to evaluate it like you do. And so they'll be able to give CCP feedback earlier where it's easier to act on and make the things that actually come out in the game way better. Mm -hmm. And watching that happen over the past year is just been that's, that's a benefit to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I can totally see that. Okay, so you are uh, probably, you were telling me that, that uh, you have not spent as much time in the game as maybe other people that are on the, the council. And uh, would it be a fair statement to say that you like your character as maybe the youngest on the council? I haven't gone back and looked at previous councils too far, but it's highly likely, at least youngest at time of election, I was, I had not my character age is pretty old because I tried to subscribe a couple times and then fell off the wagon like a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. But um, it only took me three or four times <laughs> before I before I got in for a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I resubscribed in June, and the season elections were in April. Mm -hmm. So I've been playing for about ten months when I got elected, mm -hmm. which is relatively short. Usually, mm -hmm. usually people are older, both because you get uh, sort of different what, kinds of expertise uh, and you end up having this network of connections. I was, I just jumped in blind and ended up building it during the election. So, so tell me, this is something that's very fascinating to me because I think that a lot of people look at the game and say things like, I have no chance of participating in something like this because I haven't been here forever, but you've done it. You, you, you know, just uh, in a relatively short period of time, you were able to actually get yourself elected. How did you do that? Mostly by completely ignoring that. Like what? People who, people who <laughs> were say... Were you an unwilling elected? <laughs> no, I mean, by completely ignoring the idea that, like, oh, well, I can't do anything because I'm not, you know, I haven't been playing for a year, I don't have a capital, I don't have a titan. There was no I can't do in your yeah. vocabulary. Yeah, and it was it was just like, oh, you know what, I'm going to try this. I think it helped that I, I started with a bunch of other people at a similar kind of level. It wasn't as big as Brave Newbies are, uh, but it was maybe 10, 15 new players, and we kept pulling in a couple more of our friends off and bringing them in. And so when you have a group like that, that's, that's that small and that new, someone has to lead a fleet. And there's no obvious veteran who's going to lead it, so might as well be me. If I want more fleets mm -hmm. to happen, I should get out, go out there. So you're not afraid to take the lead? Yeah, and that... That probably helped. <laughs> it, 
I was in a sort of fortuitous situation where there wasn't, and some people coming in end up in a, an alliance or an area of space where there's a very old established order of people, and so you're not, it, you know, it's like joining a, an older company. You're never going to be the VP because, well, you're just an engineer, you're a senior engineer. You have to be before you know, unmentioned like chemical engineer. engineer. Because there's so much seniority in front of you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and when you join a group or start a group where you don't have that, um, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, because someone has to do the functions of sort of alliance leadership, corporate leadership, diplomacy, all that. And once I was doing that, uh, it was a little more natural to jump into trying to do the CSM thing. I was with a group at the time in Providence that didn't have a clear candidate when I decided to run. Another one stepped up and he's actually running again this year. So it'll be interesting to see how he does. But I put my name forward as someone that people have at least seen around. Uh, and that was kind of the, the, the pilot light, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and from there, it was just you know, going on podcasts, talking to people. But I think you engage with the community uh, beyond just inside the game. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, that's the only way to do it. If mm -hmm. you're going to, especially with the, we're using a single transferable vote system, so it's incredibly important that you make friends, that you don't, if you're just in, if you're just in one little area working on one little thing, those people will vote for you, no one else will ever hear for you. Mm -hmm. So, got on Twitter, got on, got a blog, got all that stuff going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you say it's incredibly important to make friends, but you're a little bit of a warmonger at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't get elected. I, I didn't get any votes from Providence this year um, because I started a war. Um, and it, it's interesting, one of the weird things about being on the CSM is in the game, the politics are everything. On the CSM, you're kind of a layer above the politics. So I was still, I ran on the platform supporting the not really don't shoot stuff, supporting um, you know, some of the Providence experience, because those are the people who I was seeing as my constituents at the time. Um, and then the relationship just deteriorated. And so in game, we shoot each other a lot. Out of game, I was still delivering on those campaigns. Still an advocate for them. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, they're, they're a fine, active, healthy region of space. But no, uh, the relationship deteriorated and it ended up with. Uh, their head diplomat came to us and said, uh, this was all started over a Navy omen. Uh, someone's made, someone was behaving badly. Uh, we exploded their Navy omen for behaving badly. And then the other person, the, the other parties basically came in and said, pay that back. And we said, we don't reimburse dumb people. <laughs> and they were offended. They, they were offended. <laughs> and and for the want of 80 million, it turned into pay it back or else, or else what, or else we take you out. No, you won't. Try us. And that suddenly there's, you know, 300 <laughs> in the dock, pilots of course. <laughs> in, in, in battleships and SBUs going up and guns everywhere. Uh, and we ended up calling in a bunch of help and not sleeping for two weeks. <laughs> but held out. All this for virtual stuff. Virtual stuff. Virtual yeah, social yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's that's how it goes. Do you have any uh, like real political background, like from real life? Nope. Mm -hmm. I'm in in real life. I was a I operated a nuclear reactor for a little bit. I was a like physics undergrad, then computer programmer, and now I've moved into doing support and consulting. Mm -hmm. And none of that's, I guess the, the support and consulting stuff is relatively political sometimes, but I got into that after I got into the CSM mm -hmm. and actually ended up talking about the CSM and the job and it was kind of interesting to explain. Oh yeah, yeah. Like when I explain to my parents that I make a living in video games. Right. They're like, how? Make them? <laughs> you know, that's that's their yeah. that's their understanding. <laughs> sure. So um so 
In the in game, how do you actually make a living? Uh, do you, do you get donations in, or do you actually go out doing stuff, or you know, get sleeping on the couch, <laughs> you know, virtually? Yeah, I moved. I moved from the one so I was in, was in Providence to uh, of sound art. It was called of sound mind to Norma Snow Group. So I'm in work now. I make some money by shooting people. I supplement that by buying flax. Um, mm -hmm. because I just recently got a new job that's taking up a lot of my time. Um, but uh, most of Flex is the currency trading. Most of my income these days comes from It's the actual banking of Iceland. Or or that. I have in the past I started out started with a scheme to buy rat loot in bulk from my alliance neighbors in Providence <laughs> where I pulled up one blockade runner. Oh God! Empire, melt it down, sell the good stuff, offer the difference, mm -hmm. and that was making me a respectable movie income. I did some ninja salvaging before that, you know, warping in and just stealing wrecks, borrowing <laughs> people's mission sites, <laughs> uh, and, and then I've done some zero zero routing. I had a reaction farm with posses for a while, which taught me the joy and glory of POS management. I don't want to do that again. They made me a lot of money, but it was a pain in the neck. Yeah, and, and something that has to be maintained. Yeah. And that's the worst part of it. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to sit down for a couple hours to play today, right. and forget about it for a week. It's, it's kind of like that, except instead of playing where you're, you know, you undock, you shoot bad guys, you, you know, black ops drop on other bad guys, um, have some great fights, get your blood, blood pumping, adrenaline flowing. Uh, instead, you look at your spreadsheet, you take your friend to Vegeta very, very slowly, you look at your spreadsheet again, you type a lot of things, you buy them, you put them in your hold, you take your freighter back, you contract it to your jump freighter. Yeah, that's the, the stuff I'm in, not doing. And then you log on to your other character to move stuff from the sit station to the POS and the hauler. You got offline things, you got online things, and that's up being. I have spent, you know, my entire, I'm like, oh great, I can play you tonight, this is wonderful. I've spent that entire three hour play session just grinding. And we're all looking at the spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. Dumb work. That's space yeah. for you. And I understand that there's some people who are incredibly fulfilled by that. Oh, absolutely. And there are people who love that stuff. Yeah, I, I work with them uh, on some of my court mates were doing their own sort of reaction farming scheme. I was providing advice and wisdom from the, the previous experience and they had a blast. Mm -hmm. Me, I, I think I prefer the, if I'm going to do something to do, I think my favorite thing right now would be to go out and do exploration. Stand stuff down, run a combat site, do a relic site, get some either salvage or possibly valuable loot from the combat site. Uh, and when I have time to log on, when I have a character in a place where I can do that, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's also some wormhole ops that I can go to, but that requires being in the same place at the same time every week. And it doesn't always work out, because I'm often doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. Will you, uh, um, you s do you find now that you're on the council that you spend a lot more time working on feed-related things, but not necessarily time in the game? Yeah, it ends up being playing what a lot of people call like EVE Offline. It's, I'm, I'm playing Skype, I'm playing Jabber, I'm mm -hmm. playing Twitter, and it's fascinating, it's a ton of fun, I love... Sir, I forgot to forget some of you. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and so it's about community. Exactly. And Doing that gives me a chance to engage with the community and nerd out about spreadsheets or numbers or stuff that's coming up. It's neither here nor there. But it does cut down on the amount of time that I can spend undocked PvPing uh, or PvEing or whatever. I love gonna try out the industry stuff once the summer expansion drops because I just redid it all and maybe now I can get into it and sort of learn it and all that. But I expect I'm going to end up being one of those hobbyists who just. I might. I make a couple things on the side. Oh look, I made I made like a million s. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good job. So it's it has an effect. 
What are, uh, so, okay, so now you said that we find out tomorrow uh, basically what the new election <laughs> results are. Sure. And how long are the terms? Are they a year? It's a year. So it's fan fest to fan fest. Okay. And uh, so in this, um, in this last year, what kind of accomplishments, what, what have you done? Prove your work <laughs> for being, having been elected. Well, the probably the biggest thing that we did was there's this feature called the Encounter Surveillance System, or ESS, and it came out in Rubicon 1.1. But it was initially slated to come out earlier. And uh, for the CSM, they fly seven CSMs out to Iceland for a summit. It's basically three days of full day meetings with as many different people from CCP as want to talk to us. And the past two summits, there's been a lot of different people mm -hmm. uh, who wanted a, a little bit of our time. Um, so it's a it's an intense week. Uh, and you, we came out and they presented what was the initial version of this feature. It was not very good. It was, I could see where they were going with it. And some of the the initial like design philosophy is still got is still present in the final one. It's a the idea is it's a structure that you put up in your, your null sex system where you rat and earn bounties, and you give up some of your bounties now for more bounties later. Mm -hmm. With the catch that in the intervening time, if someone works in, they can take all of your money and run away. So. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a lottery. <laughs> it's a little bit of a risk. If you have an active system, you should be able to fight off anything minor. People have gotten very creative with the positioning of these to make them harder to raid. Um, you can empty it uh, and just sort of share out payments to everyone. Uh, it, it gives back the support for what you can. Wow! Um, and so some of that initial design, uh, or some of the initial design survived in that final version. Uh, but there was some other stuff that just, it wouldn't work with these players. Mm -hmm. It, and that's where we came in. The uh, team presented it, and CSM, who are generally very kind of positive people, like we're, uh, I I found it to be true that you catch more flies with you know, honey than vinegar. Uh, although of course the reverse is true in real life, but whatever. Uh, the, <laughs> whatever. The, the, the saying is. The saying is. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The saying part is true. Um, and in this meeting, it was uh, an almost uncharacteristically passionate. Just you know, this isn't going to work. This isn't ready. These are the things that are going to happen if this goes live the way it is right now. Mm -hmm. And just hold off. So, so basically, it got delayed, reworked, and now it's implemented and, and it's working it's a lot well. Better. Yeah. Um, it. We ended up having to. We ended up having some communication about it after that finished. And then when the team came back to re-implement it, they were very open with us. They brought us in a lot. It was vastly improved. Mm -hmm. And it was it was good. It went out. The community had another round of feedback, and we got to do the, the thing that we sometimes do where we were uh, a filter on the fire hose of feedback coming out. So I read through the thread. I collected all the points. I put them into a bullet pointed list, basically, and I said, "Here's what people are mad about," mm -hmm. and all got fixed. Um, so very successful in terms of the CSM going and taking something and making it better. And that's the kind of thing that we can do. Uh, certainly, if CCP works with us, which they've found it beneficial to do, mm -hmm. it saves them a lot of time, um, and if we have the right kind of people for the job. You, you mentioned, uh, like, coming out here to Iceland, which is where we're at. You can't tell by the <laughs> background here, but we're at FanFest right now, 2014. It's awesome. And, uh, yes, yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah.